the bands are still playing. No, no, no. Oh. The, the, queue is, oh. the queue is the queue is so you start the show. Okay, sorry. Okay. And here comes the orator. Ready to tell her story. Every single story has once been told, murmured, whispered, sung. I like to think that it's taken me 11 years <laughs> because I started writing when I was eight. And um, so a lot of the poems were written between when I was, so throughout secondary school, I used to keep, I used to write journals, I, sorry, write poems rather. And I wrote this poems consistently for seven years. And um, a lot of the poems that I performed here, like Thurn Mainland Bridge, Iyanu, those poems were from those journals that I wrote, some of the journals are right here. So for this poem, I need your help. And you need to go, mirrors and journals, go! Mirrors and journals. I can't take it, mirrors and journals, go! and reflecting my medium of self-expression. One speaks my thoughts, the other seeks my worth. You see, your mirrors and journals have two things in common. Reflections and reflecting your medium of self-expression. One speaks your thoughts, the other seeks your worth. This Day Style Magazine, July 2017. Sefi Atta, Writer of everything good will come said that when I dream of my creations, that is a good sign. So do you dream of your creations, your photos, your music, your art? Do you feel like you breathe life into your works like God to woman and man and Adam as he named his animals? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please turn your phones off before the play begins. You see, writing allowed me to play, to pretend like everything was okay, and through every character I played, I saw a version of myself. Poetry, my first truest form of self-expression. Malik Sidibe, Malik Sidibe's works reminded me of my identity. Black, woman, Nigerian, woman, lover of Christ, poetry, and politics, feminist. So I had this show, something similar, Interest in Bates, in London in 2018. And I remember like, I was really frustrated by how I just felt like my poems were everywhere and I couldn't link it all together. And I was like, how do I link this together? And the starting point was my mom. Cause my mom was um, sort of like my inspiration in terms of like, writing because she was somebody that I felt like was very consistent in both my reading culture and writing. So my mom used to tell me a lot of stories when I was young. Do you want to hear a story she told me? Story, story. story. 
Once upon a time, one day there was a chicken. This chicken ate biscuits for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. This chicken ate so much biscuits that one day this chicken was walking down the road and a lion, a hungry lion, thought this chicken was a biscuit and ate the chicken. And that was the end of chicken biscuits. You see, my mom will tell me these stories to stop me from eating Maryland cookies. <laughs> but I still eat them right now and I'm not a biscuit or chicken. My mom made sure like my sisters, my sister and I rather, um, like we had to read books, but reading culture was so important in our family. My mom would ask us, okay, you read this and this, what did you read? Summarize it for us, write it. And then we'd have to read it to our grandparents later on. So everything I told was true. And so I think the reason I say the process was 11 years was it was a, a process, although unknown to me till now, that I felt like my mom had been preparing me for up to this day without me realizing. You see, my mom fueled my curiosity. She bought me journals and books and pens and made it compulsory that my sister and I write about every single travel trip which we read to our grandparents and every single Sunday school, um, after Sunday school rather. And I remember that she made us write about every single Sunday school lesson. And there was a song that sounded like this. Will everybody blow your trumpet? <laughs> my poetry. It is laced with truth, drenched in tears, soaked in sweat, filled with ink that can make you think of loving yourselves over and over again, of unlearning and learning what you blindly accepted, of understanding and realizing that you are bold and brave enough to tell your story. So cheers to my creative writing teacher in year four, who taught me to always tell my. Guys, I can't lie, when I drink water, do you know that? I'm just thirsty. Yeah, because like, can't lie, my throat is hurting me, but I feel like, obviously, you know, the audience has to feel this thing, this line, so I have to make it more dramatic. Guys, please laugh. Like, why are you saying it's not funny? It's funny. Koya, yeah, I don't know why you've been beefing me. All rehearsal process, you've just been fighting me. I don't know what I did to you. What did I do to you? No, boys, like, you're always my guy. What happened? Because I did not buy you chicken today. Really and truly. Don't worry. Yo, boy. I got you next week. Why do you think rice and cheese better than jollof? Huh? Why do you think rice and cheese better than jollof? I can't lie, I can see where it's coming from. Some rice and cheese is hit. So it is. Rice and cheese, yeah? I had jollof rice so much. I feel like yeah. with this, there's no music director. Everybody has their own um, inputs and sometimes in the midst of a poll, in the midst of Lamarin doing her thing, um, we'll find that, okay, Koye might contribute, then Peter might contribute, and then we'll all come together and then, like, we find that it just makes a much more beautiful piece. So I think what's so beautiful is about the different parts of the whole body, which allows everything to function so well, and when the sounds come together, it's just so beautiful. Personally, I think um, the saxophone speaks, and... Um, the way I play, by grace of God, like it, um, it complements how or what she says. So there are times we put accents on certain words. It just, it just complement. We just complement each other. It began with the pictures. Then we arrived at the oldies. 
You see, an army of aged men and women glanced at me. Elastic skin, brittle bones. Then the greeting, another obligation, a custom. I sat down listening to the live band's Fuji music. I sat down with little or no emotion, confused. You see, I hid in my cap, but it seemed like the cap wasn't doing too much. Then they came, middle-aged ones ready to evaluate my history. You have grown. They screamed a sound frequency similar to the band's. I brought out the fake smile, another obligation, a custom. I sat down, then I answered a few, but I was distracted by the intense aroma of red wine consumed by Nigerians from Southern Australia. My mind tried to race around, but all I saw was the Mercedes Benz 200, and it stared at me like that photographer. I wanted to leave the gathering but I could not. It seemed like I was stuck with elastic skin and brittle bones. 12th July, 7 p.m. I sat unmoved, stationary. You see, I needed my pen and journal. But I realized that I was going to be once like elastic skin and brittle bones. You see, life has a cycle. And it hadn't dawned onto me till that day that I was going to be once like them. Yeah, we've sold, so we've sold out um, six nights to the extent where, you know the balcony, now they have to have people there. What well, they're going to do for on the side now? Yeah, oh, I know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We sold it from yesterday was Tuesday, today was on Monday. Monday was Tuesday. And I was literally like, I, I cried, okay? Ianu is Yoruba for wonder. And I am Yoruba. And Yoruba is a tribe in Nigeria. And Nigeria is a country in West Africa. That is what I was told. My teacher told us to memorize 36 states and capitals. It had become our passports into class. So every day, we will recite all 36. And when we go to Jigawa, we will stammer. But we will stammer even more when we heard that Kaduna's capital was in fact Kaduna. <laughs> How can a capital be its own namesake? Iyanu. The Oshus and Oyos and Onoguns were familiar. And that familiarity with my mother tongue grew on me. But you see, it was an odd familiarity. I did not know it well enough to speak it or understand it when it was spoken. But I understood the food. I understood rather the food, the culture, and the people. And how come grandma and grandpa can mold the eba so perfectly? I tried not to stare when they ate their eba and okra and stew. 
But my eyes were transfixed in wonder. She knew. They knew. I knew. Iyanu. So how do you think um, the set design contributed to the relatability factor offered by it? I think the set design added to it because it was all the things which Lenare spoke about and mentioned within her words that were emphasised through the set um, within, for instance, the draping of the curtains at the top, which was an aspect which I incorporated because of because in lots of Nigerian households, you have a grand kind of draping curtains and maybe your kind of like showy, like guest living room. And um, for instance, the table I made all from wooden pallets and a slab of acrylic, which I found because in Nigeria, these are kind of objects that we use on an everyday basis. And I wanted to repurpose and reuse rubbish bin, like waste materials in a household way, which it could be used and you might find in some households, but it was also, a an aspect which me and Lenari talks about of adding kind of Afrofuturism, which we, which I intended to do through kind of recycling those products as well. Um, the postcards, artwork, these are all things and reflections of her own mind and thoughts, including kind of the spacing of the more bedroom side towards the homey living room side where she would unravel and unwrap her thoughts. Just ask for permission before this language is free. And then the boat rattle. That's where I want a lot of. Um, yeah. No, no, no. It sounds too soft. It's a rattling. It's like it's shaking. Like. Uh -huh, yeah. But yeah, let's, let's go there. So let's start from. This language must keep shot. Words, culture, gender, religion, tradition, art. Till it is allowed. Yes, allowed. To have its keys. Because this language must ask for permission before this language is free. The boat rattles. <laughs> the beauty in our culture is that we can ascribe objects their properties and animal superpowers. Ijaqa the tortoise can be a wise teacher because of a tale we told. And Nancy the spider can be a storyteller because of a tale we told. The ordinary can become extraordinary through this language. Speech and gesture, once confined to individuals, can be collectivized, modified, almost televised, and displayed as a magical, intense performance of poetry, music, and art. Imagine the boat filled with men and women who tell their stories whose resistance can be protest slash survival. Who dance to the talking drums and ivory horns, who sway their hips as the beads on the shekere bounce on its wooden surface, like the sound of the sea. This language speaks of candles, of holy waters, of incense. The children shout, the white man is here. They speak of holy waters, mats, Cursive consonants, the adults say, you need not tremble with fear. Imagine the boat rattling through the waves that crash on the shore at the point of no return. When did our language travel from the center to the margins? How did our language travel from our continent to others? How did we learn to synthesize the colonizer's gaze of culture with ours so creatively. Asterix one. Asterix one brought down sea rhythmic blends of claps, of shouts, of enthusiasm, of fucking drums, of shakeres, of agenes in sacred places. See sacred as sacred and no noisy instruments allowed. How did we forget to question? How did we forget to make room for disruptions, for ruptures? How did we remember to commodify and objectify women? How is it that essentialist notions of gender spread far and wide so that a man's tears could be mistaken for the droplets of rain that fell on that boat you imagined? And that a woman, after working tirelessly, could not rest because her productivity was linked to her ability 
to serve every single person but herself. How is it that these associations emerge? I really think it was powerful and she made me realize something that I have in my own heart because you know I'm all about that being bold and like be bold enough to tell your story. I think that's the key. And then I was wondering, okay, you're bold enough to tell your story, but what if people don't actually care? What if people neglect your story? You know, like all these questions. And she made me realize a lot of stuff that I will fix in my creative processes. Nanoire's perception, observational skills. I, I realized that they were very good and I you know, kind of like encourage her to ask those questions, to talk more, to express herself more. By the time I read her, her journals, I was impressed and that led to, I don't know if you know she's an author? Okay, that led to the book of Ivory and Ink. You know, and then of course the spoken word evolved from there because I believe where you cannot get to, your books can get there. So I said, go on, put it in writing, and then here we are today. She's performing what she had put in writing. Grab the disc, the cream yellow cover with bold black women. You have to place the orange pillows. Their loose threads are like the grains of rice you left on the red table near the white walls and switch on the disc player place the compact disc in let your small hands touch the amplifier the cold metal now wait the beats are repetitive the beats are fast now shake your small head to the left and to the right now now wave your hands jump from one pillow to another and sing with the purple dinosaur now stop the beats are slow. Fling your extensions. Express yourself. <laughs> I want to hear the clear crystal sea blue beats clatter. Fling your extensions. Express yourself. I want to hear the clear crystal sea blue beats clatter. Fling your extensions. Express yourself. I want to hear the clear crystal sea blue bees clatter. Fling your extensions. Express yourself. I want to hear the clear crystal sea blue bees clatter. It is still fresh in my memory. My childhood memory. about like lions, deers, and tigers in a habitat. Your rate of movement is encoded in class, that is, of your car. Your rate of movement is also encoded in size, simply size. The large Range Rover overtakes the little Kia's, Toyotas, and the outdated Lexus. You see, the bridge never seems to end. The beautiful landscape reminds me of the Lagos I envisioned. Canoe men facing the tedious task of rowing the boat, I reach for my camera and attempt to capture the beauty. But I cannot zoom enough. It is only 16 megapixels. Above the cumulus clouds swing gently, I reach for my camera. Nature has been kind to the tree canopies. 
The irony is behind those large trees are giant electric poles, apartments. Infrastructure has strangled nature. The Danforth drivers are as impatient as their passengers. The Danforth drivers are as impatient as their passengers. Pause. My song is interrupted by loud chants from energetic conductors. <laughs> Just saw the green signboard. Ebutemeta is bold in white. Hawkers, athletes in training, have run past it several times. One winked at me. No comments. My legs are crossed now. And I am hungry and tired and cold. And it is misty far ahead. Businessmen are sleeping while the chauffeurs drive. Street lights, are, street lights are the giraffes. You thought I forgot the savannah. It is a race, you know. It is a race to work. It is a race to play. Another display of exuberant colors, Coca-Cola billboards. Ah, I nearly forgot the most hardworking creatures. You see, the last smart officials have upgraded their pale yellow shirts and wine trousers to leather gear. Camera filled me, memory full. I'll just keep watching Third Mainland Bridge. I'll be here till Friday. Don't touch my hair. When is the feelings I wear? Don't touch my I barely had hair. Mommy had cut it all off in the salon because I cried too much. I cry as the relaxer's sharp tingling burns my scalp, relieved when auntie washes the chemicals away. I cry when auntie plays tug of war with my hair. I smile when the last braid's done, but I realize that I am now a big girl. I have been upgraded from that short wooden stool to the rolling chair with wheels. Can you not clap for me? You know, braided. This is a big deal for a big girl. I smile when the last braid's done. When auntie trims my hair in this hot Lagos sun, I think of trimming as shedding, purifying, because she is making room for my uniform, for my crease cut, sharp looking uniform. Black braids were my uniform for years. And I wore my uniform with pride. I wore my uniform, this short mini afro. And he brings out the hand dryer. And he brings out the comb. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I always read your book. <laughs> you always be complaining with your hair. I just read your book. She said, Mommy, pay me this much. Like, just read your book. Read your book. What's all I even doing? You didn't tell me. Giving me work to do. <laughs> hmm? Braids. Braids. What kind of braids? You didn't tell me. I told you, you'd be streaming all this, your stupid Instagram. I don't know what this, a generation of people are. Before in those days, you just had to look at the poster and you just tell me what hairstyle you want. Or you just generation. Move your hand. I say, Auntie, heat damages my hair. I say, Auntie, my hair must be treated with love and care. 
Auntie hisses and says, Shebe, you want to mix color 30 and 22? Mm -hmm. Auntie brings out the hand dryer and says, this your hair will be finer if it was relaxed. You should have seen the joy in my eyes as Auntie brings out the beautiful hair. And he tells me to face my friend. Read your book. Read your book. I open my book, shutting it sharply as the hand dryer is closed to my skin. This hair hurts, but I am now a big girl, so I must take the pain. Beauty is pain. But my hair is now political to me. It became political when I first came across this beautiful phrase in a Bell Hooks book. The personal is political. So my tough medium Afro hair mattered. It was a symbol against racism and a beauty industry that hated my hair. Thought that my natural hair would be greeted with a warm welcome from the world's most populous black nation. But I was told, it isn't neat enough. Show us the afro when it's full. I became aware that some type of woman had an unacceptable kind of hair. And mine, mine was unacceptable. I could see they thought it in their eyes. I became aware that some girls who never wanted to feel the sharp tingling of relaxers didn't have a choice. Because natural hair care was and still is expensive. My hair is still political. I am proud of this hair. This hair made me so proud of my roots. Black braids were still my uniform for years, even when I was done with secondary school. But I wore my uniform. I wore my uniform with pride. But I once thought that wearing bright colors would make me too visible, too loud, too seen, but I am black and loud and proud. I am black and loud and proud. And mommy loves it too. I was uh, quite deliberate and strategic in, in the parenting style. I surrounded Lameri with books and journals, and she was able to interpret the books I gave her and journals I gave, I mean, by, and by writing in those journals, um, deep things that made me take a second look at that gift in her, you know. Apart from the gift in her, is also very hardworking and disciplined, you know. She goes everywhere with her journal. When I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. And she's able to um, look at things from different perspectives and it comes alive when she writes it. There is this feeling of not feeling. I feel at the moment. The absence and presence of my emotions is disturbing. It is as though I can feel but it hurts that I am able to feel. You see, I sit on still this time, and the sun's rays cast itself on my skin, maybe because of the breeze. And I walk through a stairway, a stairway of opposites, concrete and tiles. And I hear a child scream as he slides through a green slide and lands in the same sand I once built my sand castles in but there's coursework due next week exams tomorrow and i really need to unfollow him oh everyone is really feeling that <laughs> there is this feeling of not feeling i feel at the moment but now now i know what i want i want to know him i want to feel him and i want to be like his son as the acapella in my head ends I hear something else that sounds like this. My word is right here. Your hands are open. Just need to take away all the distractions. 
And from that moment, I decided to feed my spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the that inspire me. From Fumilaya Ransomkuti to Nana Asmao to the Aba women. And for some reason, these women, their lives are undocumented. For some of them, they revolted, they campaigned. Some people even organized protests. And I found this very worrying that some women leave such amazing lives and for some reason they are made invisible. And Fumila and Samkuti is a good example. If you haven't heard of her today, I hope you do some researching after. So Fumila and Samkuti was not only the first woman to drive a car, as some history books would say, but she was also the leader of the Egba market women's revolt. And basically, this revolt was a revolt against a taxation that was imposed by colonial administrators. And it was passed across by the king of the land. And Fumilara and Samkuti got a few, women, well, a lot of women actually. And they made posters and placards and they revolted. And they won. And I found this very inspiring but also saddening because I didn't learn about this in class. And I never even encountered this in university. And so it was, I felt like it was my duty to sort of research these things, but also ensure that people know about these stories because they are so important. And I think they are so important because of encounters like this, encounters like Ebony. Ebony. Associate the word Ebony with the tree Ebony. Notice how the tree has a smooth finish when polished. Imagine a world where black women weren't punished. So for a few seconds, just shut up and listen. I remember when asked what's next, replied with master's PhD, this man said, when will you settle down, you career woman? The thing about black women is that we are always told to click pause, always told to wait our turn, told we are extra, loud, aggressive, and angry, as though we are angry for nothing. I remember when I said I was not changing my last name, was told I would never marry, to which I sighed, replied, smiled, and said, marriage is not my identity. Ooh. Ebony. Associate the word ebony with the tree ebony. Notice how the tree is vital for commerce. Notice how black women are as well. Except we are commodified and vilified and exoticized. And like the tree, we are at risk of extinction. From being cut down by patriarchal chainsaws, which then tell the forest full of other ebony trees to be silent. It's been too hard 
Cultural studies. She brought in feminism. She brought in history. What culture? Made it contemporary. Made it contemporary. Yes. What dance? What culture? What music? What? Oh, wow. Wow. She's so fast. She literally wow. broke wow. generational she, barriers. She broke genres. In wow. This performance. Wow. Wow. If you're from the yeah. 60s, 70s, 80s, 30s, 40s, <laughs> everyone could understand it. It was wow. a language, a unified language. Mm -hmm. Codified like Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was more of like relatable kind of exactly. jokes, you know, like nostalgic kind of like banter. So kind of thing. an example. Of that. Like when she was in the, yeah. you know, when she was in the salon with the um, the dancer's yeah. hair. So yeah. Like, a, anyone who's had to sit in a salon with that, like yeah. someone's yeah. dealing with your hair, you can relate to that. And she's literally talking like that one of those hairdressers. Yes. Yes. The her ability to incorporate different aspects so that the drama, the spoken word, the band, the singing, all of that put together made it an amazing show. Go. Again. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Oh, and yellow attracts flies. Yellow attracts flies. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Oh, and yellow. It was transcendental. Honestly, I feel like I rose above my experience in my place and time. I feel like she she quit the archive. She moved us out of our experience into an embodiment of work, full of richness. I yes. felt like I experienced myself yes. through her work. Yes. So, like, I saw it. I didn't, I wasn't expecting it. Even though I knew she was great, I couldn't expect it was that, that great. Yellow. And, uh, yeah. Yellow, 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 and in shackles their hands and legs were in. The transatlantic trade is what they called her history. You see, this is a story of the artfulness of neocolonialism insinuation. This is a poem by verse writer of black men and women tramped up in boats and given food that gave them constipation. This is a song with echoes of Belakuti, Tomasankara and Kwama Nkrumah that still retells itself. Because my Africa, my Nigeria is still being placed at the bottom of bookshelves. She still yearns to resist the forces of neocolonialism, but she can't. You see, the shackles are in our minds and they're reluctant to cut the umbilical cords. The obstacles, the challenges that emerge from imperialist notions of you are too young to be a business lord. And woman, they say, frailty is your name. The creator made you the weaker being, so you should never aspire to inspire. And follow the leader, because the childhood song said so all lies. And they say to man, you are biologically predisposed to be strong. So never, ever be vulnerable. Chest that pain. And they say to child, this education system is for you. Don't challenge it. Don't reinvent yours. Don't transform it. So I want you to shout any challenges that has affected you in your life. Fear, time management, sleep, lack of focus, imposter syndrome, fear, laziness, anxiety, money. <laughs> and now I shall cut these insecurities, this fear, this doubt, mental health issues, anything that is stopping you from achieving money, fear, procrastination, so, yellow attracts flies, yellow attracts flies. And I guess that's really the key, you know, like, see an artist get inspired by this artist. And, like, really, that's, that was amazing. 
You missed out. What are you doing? Are you sleeping on the job? If the opportunity comes again, grab it with both hands. Grab it. Grab it. <laughs> okay, I know my mom is my inspiration, so that's my starting point. So how do I end this? And I was like, well, I want to end it with me, so... <laughs> Just reminding the audience of my name, but also because black women, are, our names are always um, either remembered or... Sorry, not remembered or forgotten or um, someone always takes the credit. And so it was very important for me to remind people of my name and my existence because this is about a legacy. As much as I'm you know, performing this, I want people to be able to see this as some sort of cultural archive in which they can look back on and say, Lanari did this, but I can do this too as well. In every row, as soon as I caught it, release the train. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lanoria Deremi, and I'm also called Birth Writer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Like me, ah, I be rolling, papa. Kilo de joro. 